Well, my grandfather, he was a trumpet player for Dizzy Gillespie, Count Basie, and Miles Davis. He was a sit-in. As a matter of fact, I had the same trumpet he bought in 1940 with the same case in my studio at home. And um, he, he did that for a lot of years, and that's how my father became, you know, in the music business, singing soul music. You know, it always been around, and then I, you know, came about, I started playing drums at four years old, so there was always R&B music, jazz music, blues music, rock music, there was always music around the house. And being that, you know, music was there and all the records was bought and everything, I grew up with those things, learning the names and learning who was who and the producers and the people that you didn't see, but they was real important behind the scenes. You know, knowing that Quincy Jones took different artists from different uh, groups and different bands and put them together to make his project become what it becomes. As a matter of fact, I'm on uh, Q's Jew joint, Quincy's um, album, with, and I did a record with Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, and Bottle. So he always did that. All his career, he always took the best and put them together to make a big project. You know, and in his early years, he made a lot of blues music. You know, Quincy Jones was one of the kings. And, um, you know, so it, it always been around me, and, I, and, and that's how I'm so deep with it. Right now, I have tons of jazz records and blues records because of the sampling and hip hop along with it. You know, uh, earlier groups, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, they, they sampled those type of records and influenced a whole section of producers and a whole hip hop nation to make beats and sounds like that. So blues is real important to hip hop music. It could work either way. Um, if you look at Spike Lee movies, most of Spike Lee movies are made in New York, Brooklyn, stuff like that. But if you listen to his background music, his jazz, his blues, it paints the picture of what of what he's trying to of what he's trying to get to you. You see what I'm saying? Blues is blues is something that it's a mind state. It's like looking at an eclectic picture. You don't know what the picture is, but you can imagine it to be whatever it is that you want it to be. It's the same thing with blues. You, 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 once you close your eyes and you listen to it, you can imagine it to be whatever you want. You can, like you said, you can feel sorrow, you can be upset, you can be mad, you can be happy, you can be whatever you want. You can feel like telling a lie, you can feel like telling the truth. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can make it, paint it the way you want. So that's why it all meshes together, and that's why everything can come to blues just like hip hop. It's so versatile that everything can come to it. Just like um, uh, the blues travel, travel band, it was a rock band, but they played blues music. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I mean. It's versatile. Everything could come to it. Hip hop came the blues. Latin came the blues. My dad was the first soul singer to sing with a, a, a Latin band uh, called the LeBron Brothers, a very known band. Uh, he did two albums with them, and then he went on his own. But they did Latin blues. I think they have an album called Blues Something. But um, they did Latin blues music. So it, it's always been around. Like I said, it's versatile, it could come from either angle. So as long as, as long as it's put in this proper perspective for that the kids gotta understand what it is, it can always last because it needs to go on generations. It needs to be around.